my sense is that you've come closer to dealing with, or including in the book, historical fact right. than in any other book. Yes. Yep. And that's dangerous mm -hmm. because the same people who will wonder, who would go after you if you'd written Fiona, yep. and they will yep. say, ah, 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 but that's not exactly how it happened. Yep. But then you can say, hey, it's a novel. Well, it, no, it's actually, it's just just a to, some ex to some extent you can, but to some extent I want to get it right. And to some extent I was bound by what the characters were doing. Um, one of the characters, Captain Gordon, yes. a lot, with the exception of maybe two or three characters, all the past characters are real. And I was able to track them as best I could, track their lives, figure out where they were, where they would have come from. Um, captain Gordon was a, a ship's captain. He was the commodore of the, the Scottish fleet, which at that time was three ships. And, and at the time of the Union, they were, of course, absorbed into the, the British fleet, which was a, a very sore point for everybody. But he was, he was the, the captain of a ship. And because of the logs, we know exactly where he was at any given moment of that year. We know that he was down in the roads of Leith. We know that he was down in Dry Dock in London. We know that he was sailing up the coast. He, and he kept a very careful note of where he was. Plus, Hook, in his book, will say Captain Gordon was heading up the coast. He stopped in and said this, and he was going over here to check on you know, privateers and coming back. So I couldn't change that. If, if I needed Captain Gordon to be there, right. then I had you to make that make sure scene that he happen in, in when he was history. there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't have him pretend to be there if he was actually down in London, because that would have messed things up. But, but where do you, this is a tricky thing, where do you, where do you draw the line between mm -hmm. where you feel you have the license to invent uh, moments and where you don't. Well, it's it's interesting because the um, you know a lot of the scenes happen between a real character and an invented character. Um, Sophia is an invented character. Um, the the man that she ends up sort of having a romantic interlude with is one of the men that was sent over from Saint Germain, John Murray, um, and he's real. And I was bound by where he was, what his what his uh, itinerary itinerary was, was what yeah. his life was, and and but. When they're interacting together, you can only act on the basis of what you know of John Murray, what you know from what other people have said about him. I had a lot of different... He was involved in something called the Scots Plot in 1704, a little bit earlier than this, when he came over with uh, a group of people that were, again, trying to agitate for, for King James, and they were betrayed, and it was just a big brouhaha. The House of Lords had all these different sessions. There were prisoners being thrown left and right. And John Murray, during all this time, was on, in hiding in London while people were being called up to give evidence against him. So I kept hoping for someone to describe him, and no one ever did. So I had to kind of actually describe him myself, um, just for what I thought he, so he would be like. License. That's the license yeah. I take. I think he might have looked like this. Um, but I... I couldn't really take a lot of license with his character because his character is very clearly described by his nephew, by the people that worked with him, by the, by the queen mother, James's mother, who was very fond of John Murray. And, and people say things about the characters and you have to go with what they say.